What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 63 of the Sasha T Show. This is a special episode because we got two guys that are the homies that are from Southern California that are dealing and wheeling sports cards. My man Michael and my man Shia. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and give a quick introduction um, of yourselves, a little background, and when you actually got into sports cards. Whoever wants to go first. Mike, age, go ahead. Age before beauty. Go ahead, Shia. Um, so I started collecting as a kid around six to eight years old, and I collected just for fun, and then I took a, about a three to four year break, and then a couple of my friends through Instagram got me back into it, and I started looking at my cards again, and I would say for the past three years, I've really gotten into it once again, uh, buying, selling, trading, and my collection has soared through the roof. I would never have thought I would have been here today, three years ago. Facts, dude. That's amazing. What about you, Mike? Um, I uh, I started when I was like ten or eleven. I'm I'm one of the older guys, though. You guys are younger. I'm 33. Uh, I started when I was like ten or eleven in '97 um, with like Kobe and Iverson and T Mac and stuff, and uh, and I I went hard till I was like 14. Came back when I was 16, right like towards the tail end of 0304. So LeBron, that's when that's when LeBron was rookie year, right? I missed I missed most of that year though. I came back at the last second, bought some SP authentic packs, and pulled a Darko Milicic rookie auto, and I was pissed. And then uh, and then college hit. I was still doing it off and on in college, but I was like embarrassed about it. Yeah. When I left, came back again. I came. I've been in and out. And then uh, in 2018 uh, or 2016, I dabbled back into it a little bit more. And, uh, and then by 2018, it bit me so hard. And I was full on in late 2018. And that's where I've been since. So it was interesting that you said, like, you were trying to, like, hide, like, you're kind of, like, sports card, like, what, what, you, what you liked, right? Is it weird now that, like, it's becoming kind of, like, this cool thing? Like, and whereas before it was, like, something that, like, I guess it would be something that people would hide, right? So, so weird, man. So weird. I mean, uh, you know, when you're younger and stuff, especially when I was younger and everything, because this was before the digital age and everything. I mean, the internet was just starting when I was, you know, getting into basketball cards. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the cliche in school was always like, well, the nerds will be the guys that grow up and be rich and be the cool guys. Yeah. And so, like, to actually see this kind of happen in my life, where yeah. like the nerdy stuff is actually cool and it's worth a lot of money now. And like, there's a lot of like, you know, uh, there's a lot of like um, reputation involved and stuff like that now. Um, yeah. Very weird. Very cool yeah. though. Are, when you're like, you're in high school right now, right? You're currently. I am in high school. Is, it, like, in a senior is year. it something like in high school where people are actually like, I don't know, like talking about sports cards and that sort of stuff. Like how's the theme in high school? Or is it kind of still kind of under the wraps and hidden? I think it's under the wraps. I know a couple guys that do sneakers, and I knew one guy that did it, but he, I, I think he stopped, and then he transferred schools. So I don't know anyone else in my school that does it, but, like, I know kids from, like, Harvard-Westlake and other schools that do it, Loyola. So I know other people, but in my school, it's not something that you talk about, but I think if the certain people start talking about it, it could yeah. become something bigger. Cause I know like my friends and I, we're doing socks and we all love fantasy sports. So yeah. It would not make sense it, not to get into sports. It seems like it's going to be like this natural thing. progression, right. Of them like starting to get into it. Is there anybody like your age or like that, you know, or that's like DMing you like, Oh, like how do I get into this? I actually got a message from my cousin the other day. <laughs> connected me with one of their friends says like the kid wants to get into it and I talked to him for a little bit and I get like dms here and there about it and my friends aren't really into it at least not yet but it would totally make sense for my group because we're so into fantasy sports like fantasy football and they all all they're all knowledgeable about both football and basketball and now they're all doing like Robin Hood stock day trading oh so they'd crush it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. they'd crush yeah. Yeah, exactly. Is it, does it seem weird now that like, because when the coronavirus came about and it like the NBA season got suspended, I think we we're all, all three of us were like, all right, like there's going to be like a little, there's going to be a dip, right? There's no sports being played, right? So 
I think we're all three of us like, all right, like, let me sell like some stuff, get like the profit and then rebuy when everything's dirt cheap. And, yep. I, and I think all of us lost like, quite a bit of money by doing that. Um, so how, how do you kind of feel about like the situation right now where card prices are actually higher than what they were pre-corona? Like, how are you guys feeling? Like, how are you guys navigating the market currently? Go ahead, Shy. I go ahead. All right. Um, <laughs> pretty much, I don't see it dropping. Uh, I analyze the stock market every day, and once it was at the what is now the bottom, I thought it was going to go a lot lower than it is now. Yeah. And it's recouped yeah. about about fifty percent most stocks, like the S S P Y and all of those. Most of them have recouped about fifty. Some have already gone and reached what it was. But I feel like the card game is in another whole different realm because cards kind of fall into the the sector of entertainment now as well because now there's no sports and people are bored so it's serving as an investment but it's also serving as entertainment for certain people so i'm not buying with caution really i'm just picking and choosing yeah. who i want to buy yeah what about you mike um well i mean so again you say like you know we saw that dip and it was terrifying yeah and uh look you said it. I remember you said it. And, and that was my feeling too. What, what you said, and I know Shia thought this too, is uh, hunker down and hold. Yeah. Right. That was the gut feeling when all this went down. Yeah. It's like not micro macro, right? You said that like hold. Yeah. And, and I was thinking, I'm like, yes, for sure. But then as things got worse and looked worse, like that feeling, the emotion that came, you know, heightened and heightened and heightened. Yeah. Heightened bro. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I sold, I just sold enough to give me enough money that made me feel like, okay, um, I could literally not do anything for like three or four months and I'd have enough money for expenses because I was, I was running very lean as Warren Buffett says that he has a really interesting quote when times are tough, um, like this, when, when a recession hits, you can see who's been skinny dipping when the tide goes out, you can see who's been skinny dipping. And when the tide went out, I was, I was skinny dipping a little bit. I was running pretty lean. You know, I had some credit card debt and stuff like that. And I didn't have a big cash reserve. So I sold off some stuff. The stuff that I sold off, I look at the prices now, it's doubled, you know, like yeah. went 2.5, 3X in a couple cases. And I'm like, ah, so, you know, but, and I look at it now and, you know, um, I, I gotta say, I am a little bit cautious just because, you know, we've seen crazy spikes on just about everything. And, um, and some of those we're seeing kind of like, you know, get, get a little stale and, and, and kind of cool off a little bit. Um, but, you know, my whole thing is, it just goes back to that investment principle, which is, you know, when everyone is greedy, be cautious. And when everybody is very cautious, be greedy and stuff. And, you know, I, I know that principle, like the back of my hand, but at the same time, like I wasn't in a position to be greedy when the recession hit because I was running so lean. So, um, you know, I've, I really made a point, Oh, not the recession, but what, what happened obviously COVID. So during this past eight weeks, I really made a point to make sure that my cash reserves are good. Um, that my buys are really thought out and, um, you know, it's, it's hard because I want to buy everything, but you know, that's where I'm at. Would, would you guys consider like right now, Cause me personally, like I'm buying a lot right now. I'll be honest, like I'm, and I'm buying what I like, right? Like Luca, you guys know I'm buying Luca right now a lot. Um, are you guys kind of in that mindset of also like, all right, like, you know, the NBA season hopefully will be back in a month or so. And if not, you know, it's just going to be an extended off season. So this is kind of an opportunity, um, especially with how many people are coming into the hobby currently, right? I mean, what, what, how are you guys kind of going about your buying process? Mike, you want to go? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, my buying process, it's, it's very in line with yours, Sasha. I buy what I like. Like I just bought a, I just bought a five figure Luca horizontal RPA from China <laughs> two days ago. So, you know, I mean, my buying is cautious, but it's also <laughs> extremely thought out. Right. So like I got an extremely good, you know, price on it. I got a partner to come in and help me out with it. Um, so, you know, to lessen my exposure and stuff, but like my buying is, it's crazy and stuff, but, um, you know, I'm just buying the things that I see the demand for, you know, and Luca 
LeBron. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of demand for KD, but now that the prices are risen a little bit, you know, yeah. will that demand last? I mean, I have never seen a shortage of demand for Luka or LeBron. Uh, since the day Luka stepped into the league, um, when he hurt his ankle, you know, that changed things a little bit and everything when he was out. But the demand was still there. If anything, it was just a buying opportunity. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, my buy, you know, I, I'm just buying what I like. Buying, you know, th- that's the best I've ever done is I buy things that I like um, that are hard to part with, but they're hard to part with because I really like them. And uh, usually when I really like them, a lot of other people really like them too. Yeah, I think I think uh, we're we're – very similar in the stuff that we like and we buy like LeBron and Luca. I think we're very similar in that aspect and we're willing to put money into them just because it makes sense from a market standpoint and from a player's perspective as well. Right. Um, what what yeah. I, Me personally, what I've gone through this and like there are certain times when my cash reserve and I obviously don't pay bills. So yeah. I like to keep my <laughs> cash good, though, because you're getting into it now. You can stock up right now. And, and For sure. Yeah. Money, bro. Yeah. Dude, I wish I was so, doing this at 16, bro. Yeah, so I don't like to spend uh, – I'm creating this new rule. I need at least a K in my bank account. I like that. Last before, below a K That's for good. an entire week. If I drop to 800 or something, I'm going to sell some and I get back at a K. Love it. And I think that's that's pretty safe. Um, regarding things I'm buying, I'm not buying prospects right now, really. Those guys that I think in a couple years, they're going to stash. If I learned anything with my uh, Mo Bamba Prism Gold, <laughs> which I bought, is it did not pan out. Um, I could have made a lot more money using that money, flipping it, grading it. Um, yeah. About $500 or $600 I spent on it, I could have easily probably threefold that, probably more. Uh, Shia, sorry to interrupt. I got a question for you. Why yeah. did you buy? Why did you? Why did you get the Mobamba Gold? Why did I get it? Yeah. So, I was at the time I was talking to Roy, and Roy was explaining to me why he liked him so much. So I started to look into him as well, and I started looking at his highlights, and I thought he could have been a kind of Porzingis type of guy, with the three point shot and all that. And the gold was six hundred, and I was looking at other prices. I'm like. For gold, that's pretty cheap. And if you look at some of the guys today, if you look at – I'm pretty sure a lot of the 2019 guys, their golds are really expensive. But if you compare them to the 2017 or the 2018 guys, it's not even comparable. Those 2018 guys sell for chump change compared to some of these 2019 guys. 100%. Well, again, so, so well, the, the reason why I wanted to ask you that, Shia, is because, yeah. you know, we talk a lot about, you know, your buying and stuff like that. And – Everything you bring to me, it's a, it's a it, um, very advanced research and very advanced opinions that you're bringing from a young age. So yeah. with the Mo Bamba Gold, where I kind of can relate to that is, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Mo Bamba, I'm not saying there's anything yeah. wrong with buying Mo Bamba or anybody who believes in him, I think that's great. I just think it was out of character for you. And I think you make a lot of smart decisions, but I think those decisions are usually informed by you going with your gut and what you really believe in. And yeah. uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been persuaded to buy guys that didn't pan out or weren't yeah. nearly the investment just because, you know, I was kind of listening to other people. And, uh, I agree. And, and I still do that to this day, but I always have to check myself. And sometimes, like, you know, I don't go with my gut because I doubt myself. But anyway, I thought that was, you know. When did you, when did you buy the Mobamba? Oh my God. I don't even remember. I bought that a while ago and it, it, it came to the point where I got offered a Jordan, uh, it was some superstar. Ultra, ultra, condition- super ultra abilities, ultra abilities, so, superstar. Yeah. So the condition was a little bit iffy. Like I, I couldn't tell cause it's one of those die cuts. So the guy was like, I don't want you to get it. And you grade it and it gets a PSA six. So he said, I'll grade it at PSA. It is still at PSA. And the guy still wants my mo, but I'm just, it came to the point where it's like, I can't, I don't want to keep waiting. And then the guy's going to get it back and say, yeah, you're going to have to add 600 to the mo. No, I, I, I don't want to do that. So then I ended up trading the mo back to Roy, who told me to, uh, to buy it for Luca. Nice. Uh, there you go. So I'm going to GCR this. I think 
I'm going to see if I can bump the surface and get this to a 10. I saw one on eBay for 1900 uh, as a 10. So I, that's a no-brainer. And I'll just keep sending it in a couple of times. It's $20. It won't go down. And then worst case, if it doesn't work, I'll either hold it or I'll just put it on eBay and some other guy will probably believe, oh, yeah, that'll bump. Let me, let me bring a question in from, from Instagram. Um, Harrison asked, do you think that prism mosaic prices will catch up to prism base prices? No, no. I, I'm not a fan of prism mosaic at all. But did you guys I, hear the news about like the thumb, like it being short printed and all that? Yes. It's I short, oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't like it. I feel like right now Panini is just dishing out a bunch of different. I know they dished out like the hybrid of select. Now there's like the T-Mall China Select. Like before there was none of this. It was just Prism. The only thing that was like is Prism Choice. That was the only thing. Now it's like every product, okay, Optic Choice. I don't see Prism Mosaic. Prism Mosaic, I think, started in 2017. I think it started around there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't. I thought it started Mitchell Tatum year. I may be mistaken. It may have been before that, but. I don't see it reaching Prism. Prism is king in my eyes. I don't think anything can really reach Prism as it is now. What about you, Mike? So I love Prism Mosaic as far as an aesthetic appeal look. Um, I, I really do like the Luca. I like that it's an action shot. I like um, – there's a lot of things I like about it. It's really cool looking. It's a really cool looking stuff. Here's my only thing um, is that – Prism is king, as you know. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter how much Prism is printed. Um, look at, I mean, case in point, Topps Chrome versus Bowman Chrome. Um, a Topps Chrome LeBron James refractor is still worth more than a Bowman Chrome refractor, uh, which makes no sense because Bowman Chrome is limited to only 300, and uh, there's probably about 1,500 to 2,000 copies of the refractor for Topps Chrome. Um, and it just really has to do with human psychology. Um, you know, in the 50s, I can't, I was trying to pull it up here. There was um, a huge advertisement that I want to say it was, uh, I want to say it was Mercedes Benz or it was Cadillac bashing the other one. And um, they were basically saying how our car is way better. Here's all the different things to prove it. But the other company, let's just say it was Mercedes Benz, they had already built up that belief system in the public that Mercedes Benz was the best car. So even if you had shown them a better car, they wouldn't believe it's the better car because they believe themselves that that was the best car because it's, you know, it's like a myth almost. It's like mythological. So um, I just think it's already in the psychology of collectors and everybody that Prism is king. I mean, Prism this year was garbage. Like it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't look good. Uh, there, was, there was so many error cards. Yeah. Um, it literally just looked like they put a bunch of dog shit together, put it in a pack, and then sent it out and said, they're going to buy it anyway. Did you guys see the centering on some of those cards, bro? Yeah. Black 101s. All the black 101s are off-centered so bad. I heard – so I heard there's this theory that they did that in order to, like, not get – not grow the PSA 10 pop report. And I feel like – I don't know. Like, that – that could be kind of smart, but like, I don't know if they actually would do something like that. Who knows? Um, but I don't, I mean, here's the thing is that, that theory, that theory carries a lot of weight because it, it would make sense. Yeah. Like that would make sense. Like, because I like they started to see Lucas pop report and they're like, Oh shit. Like let's, uh, let's like simmer it down with Zion and jaw. Right. Right. Which, which you think about it and you're like, that's prism just being smart. Yeah. Or the flip side is Prism is just like, F everybody. We can just make whatever we want because we know you'll buy it. You know? So it's like, if you like Prism, I would say that you would subscribe to a belief that Prism did it on purpose. If you think that Prism's garbage, then you would subscribe to a belief that, no, Prism just doesn't care because everyone's just going to buy it anyway. So I don't I, know. I think it's the one that they're going to buy it anyway. I look at Optic. There are two or three guys in Optic, they forgot to write their name on the card <laughs> on the front. <laughs> Kendrick, what, Nunn, okay. right? Kendrick Nunn and Lucas Samanik, I think. I think oh, those yeah. are the two. Yeah. And like. And wasn't it Shea last year didn't have the RC logo? Correct, on Prism. 
Yeah. And then there was Josh Hart and Milos Teradosic, who had the rookie logo, but they weren't rookies. Right. So, I don't think they did it on purpose. I just think Panini tends to mess it up. Like, look at Optic. Optic is so hard to grade. That yeah. centering is horrible sometimes. It's yeah. top to bottom, left to right. It's just off. It could have been to manipulate it. I'm still learning this year's prism. I think the centering's kind of tough. Because I've noticed a lot of the cards on the front, it's perfect. On the back, it's off. Or on the back, it's perfect. And on the front, it's off. Yeah. So, kind of off and on. But I definitely think it was just error, in my opinion. I agree. Now, this is one thing I want to kind of bring up. Because I know I've been mentioning it to you guys for a while. With uh, the whole soccer card market. Um, so, what were your first thoughts when... I came up to you guys and I said to buy Kale and Mbappe. What were your first thoughts? I want to know how crazy you thought I was. I said, uh, I said to myself, this kid's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I knew people thought I was crazy. I knew it. No, I mean, look, like, I just um, – I, I don't understand the sport. I don't understand the demand for the hobby uh, for that sport. Um, I, I watched Mbappe in the World Cup, was it 2018 or 2000, yes. yeah, 2018, right? He yeah. tore it up, and he was like, that was his breakout, right? Yeah. Well, I watched that. I was like, I believe in that kid. I, I just uh, – my brother's favorite um, sport is hockey, so I know hockey cards pretty well. Yeah. I can tell you about hockey. The demand for hockey and, like, the prices on hockey stuff is nothing. So, with soccer, I just I, – I didn't give it the benefit of the doubt. Or I, yeah. What about you, I'm in kind of I'm kind of in the same boat. I watched Mbappe tear it up, and I was actually a big soccer fan growing up. I didn't watch basketball or football. Then I got into basketball, then football, and then back to basketball, and then tennis throughout. It. And I stopped watching soccer as much as I used to. Like I, I'm a huge Barca fan, and I used to follow it a lot, and now I don't follow it that much. But I remember in the World Cup, there's always a couple guys that blow up. I know there was Griezmann that one year, or maybe that was 2018, where he tore it up. Then there was James Rodriguez. On, he tear, tore it up a couple of years, too. And it just came to the point of, did I want to put my money there? It, yeah. I just wasn't all in, I feel like. I felt like, yeah, it could. But, okay, I could put it also in Luka because this was a year ago. Nice. I could go put in a Luca or put it in something else, yeah. which I knew about, and do it there. So now exactly. I see it. Yeah. Oh, that makes and sense. I did, and I did buy Mbappe the other day. I told Sasha I did buy a couple top scrum of yeah. his. And I think I bought them at a deal, and I'll either grade them or I'll sell them because I'm going to make money on them either way. So I think now it's just the train. But Sasha's sitting uh, uh, with a bank. And we're just here uh, eating crackers. So, yeah. Hey, so, so, Sasha, that, that card you showed, was that the World Cup card or was that the uh, Prism? Yeah, so this is going to be the World Cup card. Now, there's also the Topps Chrome, which actually came out a couple months before the World Cup card. Now, this card, the, the, the World Cup set is starting to gain a ton of traction because people are starting to notice, hey, it only comes out every four years, right? It's limited. We don't know the print run, that sort of stuff. So right now, like, the World Cup card is more desirable, but the Topps Chrome card is still on the come up um, because it did come out actually a couple months before the World Cup card. And the, and the World Cup is Prism. Yeah, the World yeah. Cup is Prism. And that World Cup Prism card, PSA 10 you have, right? Yeah. What's that worth right now? Um, I would say it's worth – the base PSA 10 is probably worth about 650 bucks. And what yeah. was it worth when you told us about it at trade night in like October, November? I was buying. 25. I was buying these raw for three dollars and <laughs> the will. For ten, I would do a forty-five day service. I was like, I don't need these for a while, dude. Right. So I did. I did. I sent in probably like thirty of those, bro. And then I was just buying like numbered Mbappe on eBay for like pennies on the dollar. Um. So. Jeez. Unbelievable, yeah. man. Uh, That's crazy. Pride. That's why that's why I love this hobby so much, man. Is that um, it's an even playing field, completely level playing field for anybody if they take the time to watch what's happening. 
hundred percent. You did you did that to a T. Hundred percent. So congratulations. You should give yourself a pat on the back. That's huge. I appreciate. Yeah. It. Well, I appreciate. So Sasha, I have a question. Yeah. I was looking at Mbappe on eBay, and I noticed a lot more Prism World Cup base than I do Topps Chrome base. Yeah, so, the, are there more prism or are people just not putting up top scroll? I think people are putting up World Cup because they're seeing the prices right now. Because we, we, like in the last two, three weeks, the prices went up like an insane amount. So I think this is when we're going to be seeing a little bit of a dip, right? Because so many people are trying to, going to try to cash out. Get out of it, yeah. But I think in the macro, dude, like we have another, like, two, like the 2026 World Cup is in the US, bro. Like that's going to be insane. Like, I think M and Mbappe is like looking to be like one of the all time greats. And he's already like, what, 20, he's only 21, dude. So um, I think in the macro and in, like investing in Mbappe is a great option. Um, whether that's the tops crown, whether that's the world cup, um, whether that's his uh, rookie sticker, um, you know, there, there's so many opportunities, dude. And he has optic world cup too, um, which is still a little bit cheap. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're there's so much – and soccer in general, like right now I'm picking up Rashford. I like him. You can get his numbered stuff for cheap. Um, it's just – it's like the soccer market's like growing every day. Like it's insane. Um, which is good. Mike is looking on eBay right now for Marcus Rashford now. <laughs> <laughs> I already looked last night actually. <laughs> Dude, I picked – oh, I don't have it, but I had – so I picked up a Marcus Rashford Prism Blue World Cup out of 199 for 10 bucks like a month ago. It's like $120 now, dude. And I haven't, wow. even, I haven't even graded it. Like, so I would highly recommend for both you guys who know the market, you guys already know the market. Dude, look into soccer. Just like find the top 10 soccer players out right now and you can find deals on eBay for the cards. Dude. Nice. Um, let me so um, any uh, – well, actually, no, no. Have you, have you picked anything up, Sasha? You've just been buying Luca and LeBron, right, and some soccer stuff? or I picked up two LeBron Chrome PSA 10s. Rookies is 111. Um, so I've picked two of those up. I've been picking up a bunch of Luca and soccer. Um, the LeBron though was funny. I met up with uh, I met up with the guy in LA at a police station. Um, so that was a cool experience. Can you uh, pay cash or pay cash, bro? Yeah, because uh, it's actually if you look him up, Yaki Borders on Instagram. He's a super dope dude. He collects comic books and all this sort of stuff. Um, so he kind of, he wanted to cash out. Um, so yeah, dude, I, I, uh, I went to the bank, you know, got a bunch of money and, and we did a cash, which is, and the card is like perfectly centered, like everything I wanted. Um, so I'm literally picking up LeBron just to stash him. Like, I just, I don't, I think in today's market. And I think what we're seeing is like, it's going to become harder and harder to pick up those types of cards. Like last year, LeBron's rookie, like his tops Chrome PSA 10 was like, what, like 1200 bucks. Right now it's like what sixty five hundred. What is it going to be if everything goes the way it's going a year from now? Like if we were getting into it, like let's say we're getting into it like twelve months from now, are we going to be able to buy a LeBron card for like twelve k? Like does that make sense in our heads? Like probably not. But we were able to buy it like a year ago for for twelve hundred, right? Yeah. So I think I think really like hoarding and and starting to buy up these like all time legend cards like Kobe's like all like those types of guys right now. I think it's very smart. Um, question about your LeBron. What's your, uh, what's your long-term play with it? And also, uh, yeah, what's your long-term play with it? Yeah, I think that that card is going to be a 10K card when he wins the chip, if he wins the chip. I just – it seems very reasonable to me. So I think that what I would do is if it did hit 10K, I would sell one, then I would keep the other one. So I basically don't have anything into it and just hold that thing. That's how I would play it out. How long are you going to hold it? Who, I don't know. When, yeah. Whenever I'm like, oh, shit, I should probably sell it now because it's in, like, you know what I mean? Well, um, I, was think, I was thinking about it because, you know, you guys were uh, making me think a lot last night when I was watching you guys do the IG. And about the LeBron TC10, it's like, look, there's only 2,000 of them. Yeah. And that's LeBron's card. Yeah. You know? The LeBron I, card. I think, it's, I think that card is, dude, it's going to go crazy. I really do. Like there, you can't buy, you can't make any more of them. There's a lot of people that won't let theirs go, and there's a lot of guys like Gary V who aren't letting their stashes go, um, and they have huge stashes. Yeah, and he's got like what, like fifty something like insane. He's got fifty of them. He's literally got what is that? Two and a half percent of the population. Dude, he has a ton of Mbappe too. 
Makes and sense. He was buying like same time a little bit before than when I was. Which is fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. So we're talking a lot about rookie LeBron. I know a lot of people are hopping on this other train of Laker Uni LeBron. Yeah. The prism base, all the prism color, the silvers. How are you guys approaching that? Uh, you want to go first, Michael? I mean, I'll talk a little bit about it real quick. You know, I was talking with another buddy today. I don't know if people realize this. Um, they're not going to have LeBron cards after he retires. Yeah. Like at all. So, you know, it's just interesting to think like, you know, you think they're expensive now. What happens when he retires and there's no more Panini cards, no more Topps Chrome, no more nothing? Like what we have is what we have. So, you know, with the Lakers Uni stuff, um, especially 2018 – yeah. Um, and even 2019, since it's the first prism and stuff, um, it'll be interesting, real interesting. So I, I have a couple and usually I'd probably flip them, but now I'm just like, you know what? The population on the select, the 2018 select silver, it's only 78 for PSA 10. And I don't know how many more will actually get 10, you know, I don't think that's going to get up to 400 or 500. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what, for a thousand bucks, I'll just hold on to it for right now. I could see this thing going like, 2x 3x in a year or two yeah i mean i picked up a cup i picked up like the low end select from 2018 i picked up like 45 of them raw from burbank on ebay yeah those have gone up a good amount so i'm cool so i'm thinking about sending dude i don't i was thinking about sending them into sgc for a little bit but now i'm hearing that like their turnaround time starting to get like a little bit longer too i just saw that yeah insane to think uh, so I might just PSA the ones that I think that will get tens and, and go from there. Dude, I think like LeBron has so many more iconic moments left that like Space Jam. Dude, Space Jam is gonna be insane. And the players, I want to know which players are gonna be in Space Jam because I would consider buying those players' cards. One hundred percent, bro. Well, yeah. you know Anthony Davis for sure, right? If Damian Lillard is in Space Jam, bro, I would buy up Damian Lillard's cards right now. I mean, I would buy Damian Lillard in general because his stuff hasn't really – cheap. It's, it's cheap, so cheap, bro. And he's a beast. It's just – I don't know. The wins don't add up. They, they have a lot of injuries. I know they have Rodney Hood out and a couple big men, Zach Collins, and a couple of those guys. But they should be a lot better than they are, in my opinion. That's a, that's a mean roster. Absolutely. What, how are you – so this is actually one thing I really wanted to get into um, – because I think you guys would be perfect for this. How are you guys feeling about, you know, there's a lot of people coming to this hobby. Some of them are like shoe flippers, retailers. Some of them are like kind of fantasy guys. Some of them are just people getting back into it. Um, some of it are just guys that want to come in, make a ton of money and get out. Like, how are you feeling with, um, there's people in this hobby that have strong, you know, strong passions for the hobby and, and they kind of, you know, they don't like what's kind of happening, to right? Because prices are going up. You know, they're going to get priced out. How are you kind of navigating and how are you feeling about this whole situation coming about where there's kind of like two different sides coming like and colliding together essentially, right? Well, for me, um, you know, I really try to make sure that I send a lot of cards to people that, uh, that, that really want the card for their collection whenever I can, you know, um, I love, I love selling, I love selling cards or moving cards or trading cards to people that actually like the card more than an investment. Yeah. But I mean, look like, unfortunately, this is what's happening to the hobby. The hobby is being, um, taken over by money and, um, there's really nothing that can be done about it. Um, you can't just tell – you can't make a law to tell people they can't buy the cards. Yeah. And um, will some stuff get pumped up and then all of a sudden go down? Sure. Um, but, you know, it's why it's so important to if, – if you want a card, just go get it, you know. Go pay whatever price it is right now because it's not going to be any cheaper. You know, this happens in all kinds of different ways, in real estate, yeah. um, in stocks, and all kinds of different things. Um, yeah. So it's no different. and. Yeah, it sucks. Um, but again, like I collect Tracy McGrady. I mean, I haven't seen these, you know, parabolic rises in McGrady cards, even though some of them have gone absolutely crazy. Like a Topps Chrome was $5 two months ago. Now it's 50. So it has kind of happened. But luckily, I already have all the Tracy McGrady cards that I kind of want. So um, it's tough. Um, but 
it's just kind of the reality. So you kind of have to just deal with it. And if you really want a card, then, you know, try and go out and get it. And, and if not, then put in the work and put in the research to find the card that um, you'd want instead for a smaller price um, that people are just going to find out later and it's going to shoot up astronomically. And then you're going to be happy yeah. because your card went up in value. You know, um, I think there a lot of it too is a lot of just FOMO. A lot of people that are just mad about it because like they wish they had gotten in on it. So it's tough. I don't know. Nice. Shia, what do you think? I think this is a very, very sticky subject because <laughs> um, it goes with the collectors and the investors. And I see posts about this every week about, oh, the investors hate the investors. And then the investors say, oh, these collectors are hoarding the cards that we want. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I feel like the collectors they love the card, but they're also cautious of the value of the card. I don't feel like they go and buy the card and they say, I love this card so much, I don't care if it goes down to $5. Because if they did, I feel like they would wait to buy the card, buy it for $5 if they thought it was going to go down that much. Personally, before I used to, I'm, personally, I used to collect for pure enjoyment uh, as a kid. Yeah. I bought cards, what I liked. I like to open packs, and I still love to open packs. Yeah. Investor, most investors don't really open packs because you're most likely going to lose money opening packs. <laughs> it's not very profitable. It's a gamble. Um, it is. It's a very big gamble. So I feel like it's going to be an issue that's probably going to escalate because I know there are a lot of people in this hobby that they love the, lo they love the hobby, and it may be getting too expensive for them. Yeah. or whatever, but I feel like if they have a card that they like, maybe they should go and invest in a card, make money on said card, and go buy the card that they love with the money that they just made. Yeah. Somebody on uh, Instagram made like a very good point. He says, I think even the old collectors are liking it. All their collections up in value. Only the new collectors who didn't buy enough who want to collect are annoyed now. Which, that makes a lot of sense. Makes I've, I've never met um, a collector whose value went up in his collection who's mad about it. Exactly. I, and I think from a collector's point of view, I mean, at the same time, they're investors as well, right? Like, I mean, is like, are, there's a viewpoint where it's like, hey, like maybe they're just mad about it because a lot of people are finding out like what's kind of happening, right? And taking those margins away, right? Um, but in the in the micro i feel like this is kind of like something that's going to be a big deal but with the way the market is going bro like those like i think this i think the game will be taken over by like flippers and investors but i don't necessarily yeah. think that's a bad thing no i i think that in a way that we're all collectors because we like to pick and choose what we like we yeah. collect what we like we're not going to go and collect something that we don't like personally i hate james harden gonna go buy a james harden card. that's that's the first card i bought from uh from michael dude i bought james harden and then i got it back and then i traded it back <laughs> i sold it back to him a month later we traded two lucas remember dude two lucas were harden i remember that dude yeah. that so cool. it's all cool. yeah. it's all what we like it's all i feel like we are buying what we like whether it's we like the player and when we like the player it's because we think in the short or long term they're gonna go up for instance, you two or all of us, we like Luca. We think Luca is a great player. We think he has the fan base. We think people and as a hobby is going to go up. We think the money is also going to go up. So we invest in him. We don't solely invest in him for money purposes. We we look at the whole picture. Yeah. So I feel like it isn't as set in stone as collector investor. I feel like it's so much more bigger than that. Yeah. 100%. And to, to piggyback on that, you know, look, I mean, collectors can make the co collectors can make more money in this hobby than investors, hands down, because the the bar gets set by collectors. Collectors taste is what sets the bar. So I know collectors that they'll start collecting a certain card, a certain LeBron James card it will go parabolic and just go up 10x, 20x in value, right? They will sell that said card because they're just like, it's too expensive to own now. I might as well take my money. 
And then they go look around. They're like, oh, you know what? I found this other LeBron James card, which is super cheap. And it's really beautiful. I really love it. Then they go out and buy a bunch of those. Within a month or two, usually, everyone else catches on. And then that card catches fire. And they make a ton of money again. So collectors set the bar. Like, if it wasn't for collectors, there couldn't be investors. So, and without the investors, then the collectors just have a bunch of cards that aren't worth anything. So, I mean, it's kind of a, it's, it's a thing where it's like one, one hand kind of washes the other a little bit and you can gripe about it all you want and stuff, but I've never met a true collector who can't find a way to enjoy this hobby in a cheap way and eventually make some money doing it because it's their, it's their, you know, taste in the, the hobby, which sets the bar, which makes the cards go up in value. So, you know. And at the end of the day, the collectors probably know a player's market the best yeah because they collect a certain player a certain team let's say, they, yeah. let's say they stalk Luka Doncic and they think oh I watch every game every minute every highlight they're investing in Luka his prices are going to go up so whenever the investors are selling or buying a high chance that a collector's on the other end of that they may be buying the cards that they're selling or they're the collector is getting out on cards and the investor says no these cards are going to keep going up they buy it and ride, ride the wave. Yep. We, quote, we got another question. In, um, this is actually a good topic because we were just talking about Luca. Will Luca base PSA 10s really hit thousand dollars? Talking about this yesterday. <laughs> I think it's gonna hit a thousand, dude. Whether that's come playoff time, he puts in like he puts two triple doubles in in a row, dude. Like I think his prices go crazy. Hold up, hold up. I, I gotta interrupt you. How many Luca Prism tens do you own? I don't own as many as I used to, bro. I probably own like 15. PSA. Okay. You own 15 PSA 10s. How many do you own, Shia? None. Okay. I own none either. All right. Shia, what do you think? I think Lucas will easily hit eight. He'll easily hit 800. And, and, and what was eight? the question? What was the question? Will they hit a Will they hit a, a thousand? Will they hit a, a thousand? Grand. I'm saying if he puts two triple doubles in in a row come playoff time, it's going to be a thousand or beginning of next season when there's a bunch of hype on him. And then he puts in like a couple good games in a row. It's going to be a thousand dollar card. What, whatever too. I, I'm just saying. Okay. Thousand. You guys, you guys probably know how I feel about it, but now, now let me, ask, let me ask you this. What's the, what's the argument that they won't. Okay. I have an argument that they won't look at Luca red. Look at the Luca Red right now. Out of one, out of two ninety nine. Do you know how much that card is? What's it? Thousand bucks. A thousand bucks. Out of two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. I take the red over a base. Think about this. Look I'm at a Luca that card, bro. You gotta send me the link. I'll buy it right now. They're all off center though. They're all PSA nines. Like there's only a couple PSA tens. And look at it like this. Look at a LeBron James Topps Chrome PSA 10 is almost as worth as a LeBron James Topps Chrome Refractor BGS 8.5. Is a BGS 8.5 only like 6,500? I'd say, I mean, like it's funny because you were talking about mine. I would say, I mean, a B, no, no, no. A BGS 9, a BGS 9, so a guy just accepted an offer on eBay for 7,700 on a BGS 9. Okay. So that's low in my opinion, yeah. but a BGS 8.5 is probably in that ballpark. I might have to throw you an offer soon, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm selling. But, but, but to get back to the point, though, Shia, 100% on the red, I don't think that's a valid – I don't think that argument holds water, in my opinion, only because yeah. the red is – first of all, it's not team color. It doesn't look especially good with the blue jersey. It looks a little bit off. And, um, it's, it's again, it's not what people know. Everyone wants a Luca Prism PSA 10 because the belief is that is the card to own. You see oh, the red, white, and blues. We talked about it yesterday. Red, white, and blues are selling for less than the base PSA 10s. Yeah. Which, yeah. Because people want the true rookie. True. And, okay, so we're going to talk about – we're talking about this. Do you guys think, for instance, silvers will hit 3K? If we think base are going to hit a K or, and their silvers are at 2,400 right now-ish, will they hit three? Well, if a base is at 500, so we're talking about going 2x on a base, isn't it, isn't it more than likely that a silver would go from 2,500 to 3K? That seems pretty fair. Yeah. 
and I'm a, I'm a more of a base guy to be like, I, I like stocking up on like base PSA 10s more than I like just buying a couple silvers. Yeah. How you guys feel about that? Like, the, the margin I'm, is on those. So I get it. Yeah. I'm not a fan of silvers that much. For instance, I'll. I think. His blue, yellow, green, and red are both 60. His silver, I think, is close to 100. Or at least I know his PSA 9 is close to 100. That's incredible. So, and, and I bought – I'm pretty sure Trey, blue, yellow, green, is pretty close to silver too. And I bought all of them in a one deal the other day, all of them. Those it just green. means there's value there. It just means there's value there, in my opinion. That will get caught up on. But, I mean, again, so I just want to say, too, uh, not so – because I kind of – Cut you off there a little bit, Sasha. I just wanted to say, you don't. You own PSA tens. Me and Shia don't. I one hundred percent think that Luca Prism tens can hit one thousand. And I'd say the biggest argument against it is the population, because they already passed ten thousand for, for population. Yeah. I don't care if there's twenty thousand in the population. The demand is the demand. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, people are hitting me up every day on Instagram saying, hey, do you have any Luca Prism 10s? Hey, do you have any Luca Prism 10s? Yeah. What that tells me is that the price is going to be already ticking up. Yeah. It's already ticking up. We're seeing it at 520, 530, 550. Last week, last week I was buying at like 430. Yeah. And I can't find anything for 430 anymore. Yeah, exactly. It, so it's what, only a matter of time before everyone agrees and all of a sudden, boom, it hits 600. Boom, it hits 700. Yeah, and yeah, what it, I've learned it, with it, Luca, it top spend the season like, oh my god, it was like, what was it at like six twenty before the NBA suspended the season? Six seventy, I remember seeing. It was that was, those were great times. That's all I got to say. Those were great times, dude. For but sure. Also, also remember the dip when a lot of us sold. I remember Lucas Silver PSA tens are selling around thirteen hundred, and now they're twenty four. I don't remember how much base they're selling for, but. They were selling for about they weren't five bills. <laughs> four hundred. They were they didn't go down that much. They were they they went down to four hundred or three eighty, and then they just yeah. like stopped and, and they went up the stick up. and then they dropped. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I sold a good amount at like four hundred too. I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I was pissed, bro. Hey, bro. Hey, hey. The best experience you could have ever gotten. No facts, dude. Facts. Um, and then like I was like, oh shit, what do I what what do I do with the money? And I was like, oh, let me buy Braun. Like, Fuck it. There you go. Yeah. Let me try to Braun get... has gone up a lot since I, I bought my top scrum. He's gone up a lot. And I had the opportunity to get two of them, but I missed out on one by like 15 minutes. The guy, I DM'd him, he was on my slab. I DM'd him like, hey, how much can you do on this? Is this your best? And he's like, sorry, I sold it two minutes ago. I'm like, great. Dang. <laughs> one thing, one thing I want to bring up. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, like Gary Vee, right? He talks about, hey, like when sports cards are becoming more intertwined with culture, um, which that's actually a great point, essentially. Do you think that it can get to the point where literally like we have really influential people like rappers, let's say, that are really intertwined with culture, literally buying sports cards of LeBron, of Kobe, of those types of guys? Do you think it can get to the point where, you know, this, this Kobe card is considered art, essentially, rather than a, a car, like a piece of cardboard, right? What do you guys think? Shy, you tell you, you go, buddy. Uh, I honestly have not given that concept much thought regarding to art. Yeah. I definitely think one major thing that influences people on a card is the way it looks. Yeah. Um, I don't think all cards are like that, but I think a lot of them are. Look at like the blue Luco out of 199 and the out of 99. Those sell for a lot more than some of the other parallels that may be numbered a little lower or whatever it is. So I think the eye appeal definitely has a huge effect on it. Even with like the Braun uh, Topps Chrome, that has a huge eye appeal, that shot. Um, and I feel like it could, and I definitely think a lot of people are gonna get into it. I think a lot of the big market investors um, are definitely gonna get into it. I think like Gary Vee and all those guys are just the start. And you, who, who knows? I think pretty much any sports enthusiast could definitely get into it. Because at the end of the day, if you want to invest and you love sports, then sports cards are pretty much right up your alley. It, there isn't much else. The only other thing would be fantasy football or fantasy basketball, but that 
that's not investing. That's just purely entertainment and you like following the sport. Yeah. I, I, and to jump on that, I'd say, um, I mean, we've all seen the video of Gary V um, and Tyler talking with Serge Ibaka, right? Yeah. And to, yes. and to point out Tyler, Tyler was the first guy that I know that was on Mbappe. Wow. He was buying them at the national last year, like buying them up. Um, so just wanted to point that out real quick. Props to Tyler, man. That's huge. Um, I mean, look at like, we saw them talking to Serge Ibaka. Look, like at the end of the day, all the, like when rappers really come up and everything, if they're really smart, they have a team of really smart people around them. Yeah. And um, usually, you know, historically, I'm sure that's going to be guys saying, hey, buy this stock, buy this stock. Well, we're already seeing people say, hey, screw stocks, let's buy cards instead. So it's mm -hmm. only going to be, it's only going to grow. And there's only going to be more people like Gary Vee talking to more people like Serge Ibaka about where to put their money. And at the end of the day, LeBron James is a hero. Kobe Bryant is a hero. Kevin Durant to a lot of people is a hero. So, you know, and Luka Doncic, even though he's 21, is a hero to guys in the league. Like people love him. They respect him so much. Nice. So that's why – um, that's why, like, even though their prices are crazy right now, yeah. because their prices were crazy a year ago too, um, even though those prices are crazy, that's why I'd say, look, ev everyone's going around trying to be like, okay, well, if Luka and LeBron's this, then is this a good value here on, on you know, not to throw out any names, but Bagley or Aiton or Jaron Jackson or Trey Young or whatever, right? But that's why I just say, just pay the money, buy a Luka, buy a LeBron. If you're trying to invest, hold that. And that's what – um, you know, when, when rappers and other big people and celebrities come in, which there's a lot that are already in. I mean, I didn't realize that Gerard Mayo was collecting cards. Like, how insane is that? that either. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. I think, like, I think, so. I think there's going to be a point where, like, well, first off, on, like, the whole rapper thing, like, I think it also makes more sense. Like, yo, you can literally have a stock into a player. Like, like LeBron. Or yeah. Thinking about it that way, that makes a lot more sense than like, oh, just put your money into like the stock market and like we'll see what happens. Like, I feel like it's like, yo, I can go buy a Kobe card. Like, that's like that's way easier. And like the returns of the last year have been insane. Okay, I'm gonna buy one. Like, fuck it. I think that that's way more appealing than just buying a stock that you don't even know about, right? Absolutely. And then I think you get something also, physical. You know, the point. Like, if it would get to a point where literally, like, they'll start literally flexing their cards, like, pulling up, like, with, like, a shit ton of Luka cards or a shit ton of LeBron cards, dude, that would be insane. Because then we're going to – we're really going to start seeing the influence of those types of guys and bringing in a bunch of people in, even more than there is now. Absolutely. That's a great point. It's like, once we start seeing those Instagram posts, you know, of rappers in a basketball card, man. Dude, it's – And one big thing I think about – on topic of Braun and um, Kobe is, first of all, they're both so loved. And I know, especially the younger generation thinks that I know there's a huge debate, LeBron or Jordan, or even Kobe, who's the GOAT. And I definitely think many of the younger generations, at least, are definitely more Braun or Kobe than they are Jordan. So I think going forward, since obviously they're much newer and LeBron's going to come out with a documentary. Kobe's probably going to come out with a documentary. Kobe's one's going to be insane. Exactly. Yeah. So I feel like buying those two guys are genius. I know I bought two top, top rookies two weeks ago with an AD combined for 240 I paid $40 for each top, top rookie. I know they're around 250 now on, on, on eBay. And I talked to Mike about this. I was like, do you think I should get out of it? Should I grade it? Should I hold it? And he said, grade. And after thinking about it, I agree. Because those PSA 9 go for four bills. And those PSA 10, I know Sasha has a whole pile of them. Um, and I know those go for a lot more than that, too. So I feel like going forward, those two guys are just two huge pillars that are just going to continue to appreciate. Absolutely. Yeah. Would, so not to bring up a whole debate, but who's like your guy that you think is like – your, your goat in your opinion right who me or shia but whoever oh, Mike. First. Mike, it's, it's look look um it's jordan it's not even close um <laughs> like but i get it like you yeah. know 
when I, when I was growing up, he was at the tail end. I really barely even got to see him. This documentary has like opened, opened up so much Jordan footage to me that I never even, or in drama that I never even knew about. Mm -hmm. uh, has opened up so many more elements of the debate. But even before the documentary, it wasn't even close. It's Jordan. Um, you know, and I can give a million reasons why, but it doesn't matter. Like if your goat is LeBron, then it's LeBron. I get it. Like LeBron's great. He's the greatest basketball player that ever lived in the sense that he's uh, the greatest basketball player. But yeah. the greatest of all time is Jordan um, for me. Uh, but that being said, like LeBron, like the fact that it's one, two, and that Bill Russell, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Wilt Chamberlain, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, people don't even say that LeBron James isn't as good as them. Like it's either MJ or LeBron. And the fact that LeBron's still playing, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like the fact that LeBron still has the opportunity to accomplish more, um, I get it. Like I get it. And I yeah. am fully in on buying LeBron. Um, but he's not my goat. I mean, it's, it's Jordan by landslide. So while we were talking about that, my mom just came through. My school has a fundraiser, and she showed me a Kobe signed basketball. It's up for 2K on auction right now. So it's still going. She was like, and I was like, I'm not paying for that. I can't afford that right now. <laughs> so regarding Kobe and LeBron and, and um, Jordan, my dad all my life, he hates LeBron. He does not like LeBron. And I've always grew up, my grandfather is a huge LeBron fan. He follows LeBron wherever he goes. So he always says to me, Jordan set the, the founding block for Jordan, for LeBron, and for Kobe. So after the, watching this documentary, and I never watched Jordan. I just knew he was amazing. Yeah. I never knew, I never knew Pippen was this good. I thought he was just a, a good secondary player. I didn't know he was as dominant as he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. And I knew Rodman was a beast defender, but I didn't know he was this crazy and this, <laughs> so, so dominant. Insane, bro. The man. So, personally, I think Jordan is the goat. I think Kobe is the most low. Yeah, I. I th that's my opinion. Yeah, I'm a Co I'm a Kobe guy, um, but I get Kobe's your goat. Kobe's my goat, um, but I get like the whole Jordan thing. I have complete respect, but, but personally, like I grew up a Kobe fan, like like a like a hardcore Kobe fan. You know what I mean? So, like, when he passed, dude, that was crazy. Like, that killed me, dude. Like, for, like, a solid – I was shook. Like, I'm still – like, it's still weird for me, dude. Like, it's crazy. But um, it, I guess it just, like, makes you think, like, dude, life is, like, super short. Because, like, Kobe was, like, a superman to me, right? So, like, if he can go yeah. down, like, what's going to happen to me, dude? You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, dude, just – Kobe's my goat, dude. Like, I, that's just how I feel. Um, I love it. So that – that brings up an interesting discussion. I know a lot of people had this. Do you? I know a lot of people are making money off of Kobe's passing, no. and they were not. A lot of people are not happy. Some people are like, "No, I'm making money because of the thing." So, are did you guys sell? Did you guys buy? Well, are you guys buying because of the Hall of Fame induction, thinking that more emotions are going to come out? Personally, I didn't own any Kobe, and I'm not going to sell it. I have this one card over here that I'll probably always keep because I think it's such a cool looking card. Yeah. As you guys can see it. It's the Kobe yeah, yeah. MJ so 3D sweet. card. I found it in a box. I'm going to grade it. I'm going to keep it because I feel like these two guys were so, I think one is the goat and the other one is the most loved living in LA. I feel like he's so influential. So I feel like those two guys are just so, like, there's just such big pillars, especially, like, not even in the NBA community, just in the community in general. Everybody in L.A. was shook whenever Kobe passed, no matter if they watch basketball or not. He kind of brought people together. No matter the athletes who played golf, tennis, hockey, whoever it was, he served as that in inspiration of how to work. Yeah. And Jordan was the same way. Yeah. So I I personally didn't own any Kobe cards. I didn't sell and I didn't buy. I bought a little bit now to flip, but there's also the aspect of no, I'm not making money on his passing because I didn't own any cards. But it's up to people's perception if that's wrong or not. Um, pretty much depends on who you are. So I just want to hear what you guys think. 
Yeah, um, when he passed, uh, the only problem, because dude, like his prices went up an insane amount. And yeah. that, that some of those prices I get was like life-changing money to a lot of people. The thing that I had a problem with, I was like, dude, if you're gonna sell it, you gotta be, be low key about it. Like put it on eBay or StockX or whatever you gotta do and like sell it. But the, when people put like rest in peace in the title or they were like posting on Instagram constantly, like have to like, that was yeah. what I had a big problem with. Cause at the end of the day, if like, if Kobe was like sitting here and you, you and, and you were like, yeah, dude, I bought your card for a hundred bucks. Now it's like 5k, whatever. He would probably been like, dude, sell that shit. Like go do what you want to do with that money. Right. Um, that's how I, I, I think that he would, he would have something that he would have said. Right. Um, so the only really problem I had was like when people were like promoting that they were selling it and like that, that was yeah. the problem I had. Right? That was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I had a hundred percent agree, man. It's, I mean, everything's about respect, you know? And, um, you know, if, you, if you're flaunting it and rubbing it up, like basically if you're playing into the emotion by saying things like RIP on your sales post, yeah. um, it's just a little, look, it's a little bit scummy. Yeah. Um, that being said, I didn't have a, I didn't have a choice uh, for selling the two Kobe's that I owned at the time because they got binned on eBay immediately yeah. uh, for asking price. And then um, when I saw that happen, honestly, uh, I went into greed mode and I started looking on eBay and looking for things to buy because I was like, I don't know if I'll ever have a shot at buying these things again because of the, yeah. the historic rises that we were going to see, not yeah. knowing that things would just crash down. And then when they crashed that, when they crashed, when they crashed down, I was like, okay, I'm buying a Topps Chrome base and I'm buying a Topps Chrome refractor if I can get my hands on one after yeah. they crash. Cause I'm like, because the, the crash to me signifies um, people still being in shock that he's dead and they're not even like really putting it together and they're not really appreciating what he was because um, I, I just think from here on out, Kobe stuff is not ever going down. I just don't think it I is. Agree. I, I agree. I agree. I 100%. Dude, I think that like, and you brought up the point, um, Shia, when you're talking about how like so many people like use him as like motivation in a way, right? Um, and so many people with like the whole Mamba mentality thing and all that, like use that for themselves. I think there's a lot of attachment with Kobe and people's everyday lives um, what, yeah. in their job, whatever, it is, what, whatever they're trying to achieve. So I, I think that's, you know, his card kind of signifies all that in one and owning something like Kobe, I think is just, it's just super cool. And I think it's just going to continue to appreciate one hundred percent. And then on top of it, it's you know you're talking about an iconic card. The tops, the tops, chrome. That yeah. card, the pose. I love how um you know the real insights or whatever that uh, Instagram is showed that it's a travel violation. The card. Oh yeah. yeah you see yeah. that? Really? I love that. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So like this move that he's making right here ends up being a travel. And did you see the like LeBron? The LeBron top yeah, throws dude, he bricks it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. But they're iconic. They're absolutely iconic cards. And that's the reason to me why Luca Prism, you know, will never lose ground to Mosaic. Because the Luca Prism of him of him doing the one footed Dirk Nowitzki jumper, um, and even in a rookie photo shoot, that that card is so iconic already. Um it's only going to become more so and the prices will, you know, it'll always be desirable. And that's why I think, you know, this yeah. Kobe tops card, the Kobe tops Chrome, it's all good stuff. Are so you with that to grade that card? Yeah. So this was actually, this was actually a BGS nine that I bought on, um, I, I bought and then uh, it was an old label. So it had pristine 10 centering and it had three nines. And I was like, well, it was great in like 2002 um maybe they were a little bit stricter then so i cracked it sent it to psa i got a psa 9 um so i cracked it again and uh, i'll be sending it to psa again and hoping for a 10 because at this point the margin is so you know vast on on the 10 and the 9 it's like you know if i could send this in two or three times and it hits a 10 it's like boom did you notice that um like over the summer it was weird to me because i was I wanted to pick up a Kobe and I saw that there was no really price difference between like a green or like a essentially green card and, and one that wasn't right. Was what we noticed that like that differential has like vastly like gone apart, which I love because that actually shows like true market value and stuff. So are 
Like, are you still picking up, or if you had the opportunity to, would you still pick up a green Kobe for like a lower down price? Or are you just looking for, yeah, you're just looking for something that's- I'd different. only buy ones with nice color. And honestly, man, my refractor has a little bit of green on it. Um, but honestly, it's because it's so impossible to even find a refractor anyway. Good, yeah. um, but this one has really nice color actually, even though you can't really see it, but this has really nice color. And, um, you know, that's why it was a no brainer when I bought it. I was like, okay, that's your price. Okay, done. I'm buying it. Um, because you know, ones with nice color are so hard to come by. And the same thing goes for the base. Mine has the tiniest little bit of green on his arm, but I would never buy a green one only because to me, it's the same thing of buying a nine or a 10. You always buy the 10 because the 10 is going to be the one that appreciates the most and the fastest. So I think a clean, like, Kobe Tops Chrome 138 PSA 10. I think that's what, like an 8K card right now? Right? Clean, like nice color PSA 10, yes. Yeah, man, I might, I might have to drop some, some money, dude. You got me thinking. I mean, I would, again, like if you found one with beautiful color PSA 10 for 8K, um, you know, if you can get it for cheaper, obviously, I would say pull the trigger because it's an iconic card. Um, it's a PSA 10. There's only so many of them. The population's pretty darn low. Um, can, I have a good amount of these, but like, I just want the, I want the chrome, you know? Well, again, the chrome is going to appreciate more than the tops. But you know, th this is at like 2K, almost 2K. I know. It's crazy. I know. But the, but the chrome will appreciate more oh, than the tops. I agree. It's because the chrome is the go-to. The same way the chrome refractor PSA 10 will appreciate more than the chrome in most situations. How like, much are the refractors at, the PSA 10s? At right there's now? one in auction right now on PWCC for 42K with multiple days left. You know, a lot of people believe it's on its way to 100K. Holy shit. But it's, it's, it's about a forty-five dollars to $50,000 card. But right now it's about to shatter that record on PWCC. I feel like there's a lot of cards like that right now where it's like they're starting to really get to the point where we might see like big jumps coming up. Like Absolutely. And why? Because it's the best of the best of the best. It's the refractor, it's beautiful color, and it's PSA 10. And look, man, I'm like, can I flex real quick? Dude, flex for me. That's what the show's all about, flexing. <laughs> That's why I bought this. Oh, oh man. <laughs> because. I remember when you bought that too, dude. Yeah. Oh my God. You helped me, dude, because you bought that of James Harden tops off me. That money went towards this. I remember you're like, you're like, I'm buying something big. I'm like, what is it? Is it LeBron? Like, what is it? You're just like, I'm buying something big. That's all he told me, bro. I was like, all right, dude. But it's the same philosophy. The yeah. big money, the big money someday, man. You know, like, God forbid something happens to Luca or whatever. But like, if Luca pans out, man. Someday the big money, it's not coming after fast break green out of five. It's coming after yeah. true gold prism, man. You know? So my question with that, how much would somebody have to come and offer you right now to let that go? Because I know you're, you're <laughs> not going to be anywhere near how much you bought it for. Because it's obviously gone up a lot since then. And, and how much would somebody have to come you, and offer you? If you can say, how much did or around how much did you buy that thing for? I bought it for $12,000. And I had zero dollars when I bought it. When I made the deal to buy it, I had zero dollars. And I basically uh, sent the payment on PayPal on a Saturday night, knowing I had till Monday morning for it to hit my bank account. And once it hit my bank account, my bank account immediately went negative 12,000. And I, I spent that 48 hours selling cards. And that Saturday night, that Saturday night, I was at trade night. Oh, shit. Dude, that's, that's a great story. That's like insane. And, and here's the thing. 50, he, that guy had 50 unread eBay messages when he made the deal with me. Dude, so different did, you, people. did you message him on, like, did you get him off eBay? I got him off eBay. Smart. And that's one, uh, that's actually a good thing for the show. Cause like a lot of people who are watching the YouTube channel and stuff, they're like just getting into it. And I always preach, like if you can get them off eBay or if you can get yeah. them on Instagram, it's the best way to go. Um, as long as you know, they're, they're, you know, they're known, right. They're not going to see. Right. Yeah. Um, but I know, right. especially times have changed before there was no problem with eBay. We got the eBay bucks. There was no tax. There was, it was a win-win. Um, but, yeah. And then before, 
on, I know on Instagram, they say, yeah, I'll buy at 90% of eBay um, on Instagram. So it'd be cheaper. But I know now on Instagram, a lot of the high, high demand, it, it flipped. They go and say, okay, your Luca PSA 10 is at 600 on eBay. I'll sell it to you for 600 because if you go on eBay, you're going to pay 660 with tax. Yep. So it's flipped. Uh -huh. Before it used to be now you can get it 90. Now it's 100 because if you don't get it at 100, you'll pay 110. So, oh, yeah. Ship my cards, though. As long as you ship my cards, you can always say, hey, I don't pay any tax. So just give me the 90%. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me bring in some of these questions that we're getting. Um, is it worth sending cards into PSA within the next couple of months since we wouldn't see our cards till next year? LOL. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing with those cards instead? They're probably just sitting there on your desk in a box. It might as well let that countdown roll. Yep. I'm waiting on, I think, 40 cards. I'd like to have them back because I could do a lot with those cards. I have stuff here I'm preparing for my next sub. And the earlier you get it out, the earlier you'll get it back. Yeah. I know I sent in a BGS sub three weeks ago. And BGS is capped the, my subber. Um, now, and he's backed up. My cards have still yet to go out. But if I sent it out today and my cards are still, were still on my desk, I would have to wait another three, four weeks because people are now subbing to him more and more and more. So I would say get them out as fast as possible um, and prepare them just so that the countdown goes. Unless the only way I wouldn't say it is if you're hesitant about grading it or not, or you think maybe I'll need the money with the whole climate. And yeah. as an emergency, you're like, oh, shoot, I need to sell some cards. Because if, if you have PSA, you're locking that up for a couple months at least. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, um, it's like planting seeds for your crops. Like you can't make the crops grow faster. You have to just plant the seeds and wait for the, wait for the whole season before your crops will grow. You kind of just like have to do that. But, you know, a tip is send it to a big suburb. Um, you know, send it to one of the big suburbs because they, they're on a different tier at PSA or BGS, right? So like their stuff gets looked at first before if you were to just send your own package to PSA. 100%. And I've also heard people who drive to PSA get a faster return as well. I yeah, don't know absolutely. if that's true. We're, but that's we're what starting a sub, and I live like 15 minutes away from PSA, so I yeah. guess we get ours logged in like within 24 hours. And I guess if you get it shipped, it like takes up to two weeks for it to get like logged in. Wow. Which absolutely. Is, which is crazy. Um, n somebody else asked, any thoughts on the next sport to blow up? Now that soccer is taking off, would be great to be ahead of the game on the next big thing. Maybe UFC. What do you guys think? Is it tennis? Is it UFC? <laughs> okay, so my thing with tennis is, okay, you look at soccer. And soccer cards are actually being manufactured. There was a Panini World Cup. There was Topps Chrome. There were boxes to be opened. There are not very many tennis boxes out there. I don't think the product, the supply is there for tennis yet. If there is, it's a worldwide sport. It's a lot of people watch it. A lot of um, men and women follow it. Yeah. So I feel like, okay, there could be that aspect, but I definitely think somebody needs to produce before that goes up because there are not very many cards. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the pop report is literally like scarce. Um, but it just depends on if the demand, I don't like, I told you guys I bought it, but I don't know if it's going to actually take off. Um, what do you think? Mike? Um, you know, I don't really know. I would say that's definitely more your guys's territory, but if I had to just like throw anything in there, I'd say, Hey, you know, look at, look at some hockey stuff because hockey is a rapidly growing, very exciting sport to watch. Tons of people love it. Um, it is, you know, it's like the little brother to baseball, football, and basketball, and um, there's still a lot of potential there. Stuff is so cheap. And there's, there's never been more talent in the league right now. Um, and and it's, exci it's an exciting sport. It is. And there's this, I know there's a lot of product for hockey. Yeah. I know a lot of these, they don't have product. Tennis does not have product. Mm. I know that. Yeah. If and you, you, go you got your card, upper deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you go to card shops, they're going to have probably a couple hockey boxes. They'll have soccer boxes. They always have. 
It's just now soccer decided to blow up with Mbappe, pretty much solely Mbappe. Soccer wasn't all that much beforehand. Everyone was Messi, Ronaldo, Pele, all the all the legends, all the top tier. Now Mbappe came out, which is pretty much Luka Doncic, but for mm-hmm. soccer, and now everything's going crazy. Yep. Yeah, I see Messi and Ronaldo cards. Those actually like doubled though too since like last year, which has been wow. insane. And if you look at the pop reports on those, bro, it's crazy. Like there's nothing, there's really nothing. And hmm. Think about Messi and Ronaldo. They're literally more global than LeBron. For sure. So like that's actually something where, I mean, it's gonna cost you a little bit to get like a good rookie. But at the end of the day, that might be something where it's like, hey, just like store it somewhere, like put it, you know put it in a safety deposit box and, and come back to it in 15 years. Do you guys think Messi and Ronaldo are more global than Kobe? I think Kobe is the top of most global, like most love, most um, like across the globe. Do you guys think there is somebody above? Do you think it's Roger Federer? Do you think it's Nadal? Mm-hmm. Do you think it's Messi, Ronaldo? Who do you guys think it is? Well, I would say, I would say that, you know, Michael Jordan's face is more recognized than the Pope in the world like that's incredible so i mean like you know i I would just say i'm sure kobe's uh reach is big but i don't really know the uh the market i don't really know the other sports well enough and i don't really know the world well enough to have an opinion on that but you know how i go about it is literally like how people how people like how like bro you're in high school like what makes you popular it's Instagram followers. Like, what people look at fucking Instagram followers and they think, even though it's, like, so messed up in the head, right? Right. But when you really take a look at Messi and Ronaldo's Instagram followers, I think they're, like, close to, like, 200 million or more. And LeBron's, what, 70? Yeah, like, 70. Wow. That's insane. That's insane. That's insane. And people, like, we're in the U.S., right? We think, like, LeBron's, like, the most popular guy probably in sports right now, right? But then you look at Messi and Ronaldo, and then you look at Mbappe, who's already at, like, 53 million. And he's 21, and Luca's yeah. at four million, right? That's insane. Like that's how big like soccer is, and that's also one of the reasons I was like, dude, I need to buy up soccer cards because this just doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Well, that that that's that's a barometer that I use too, actually. And I've been paying attention to Luka Doncic. He's went from two million to four million um, in the past season and stuff. And I th- I feel like that's going to get parabolic uh, with his Instagram following, which is going to be very interesting because he's – look at what Giannis is too. Have you seen Giannis? What is Trey? Trey, Trey can't be more than Luca. No, he's got to be $2 Trey million or would something. Be. But you know what's funny? Lonzo Ball, $8 million. Wow. And that – dude, I bought up Lonzo Ball last summer, and I thought it was a dumbass because when my grades, when my grades came back from Will, he was injured and it was not looking good. But I kept it, and then he started popping off, and I was like, finally, like, I, got, I made some money off of this. But, um, yeah, like, Lonzo Ball, 8 million. Melo's already at, like, I don't know, I'd say, like, 4 or 5. Um, so, I mean, Melo's going to be very interesting when he, when he gets drafted. Um, that's going to be a guy that I'm definitely going to take a look at. Too. Wow. See, I never even thought about that for the Ball family, man. I don't know. Why are they so big? Because they get the TV show and stuff? And of that dad, probably. The dad just talks about them no, so funny. much. I, re- I really like Jello Ball's game. I'm not going to lie. And people, people think I'm crazy. Like, he, like I think he's going to make it to the NBA. Dead ass. Wow. I, and I hope so. It like, would fulfill the prophecy. But And, and imagine if, if, like, the three Ball brothers do get on the team, like, what do their cards do? Just based off their popularity. Like, what do you think? They can't do much. It's, it's all – I mean, talent is – talent and what you accomplish in the league has so much to do with it, you know? That's why it's, like, Giannis, Luka – um LeBron you know like Kevin Durant like you know it it takes so much for like their prices will probably do something I'm sure they'll be like a little surge but it's not sustainable if they're not performing I agree so we've been talking a lot about basketball and a little football a little soccer we have not talked about football or baseball at all (laughs) and I know Mike for sure is not into baseball that much I know he's got a couple Mike Trouts here and there yeah, I got a trout. I remember Good Mike trout. was picking up trout for like seven hundred bucks at, at the a, show at Fountain Valley, and now they're what are they at? Like three k. Oh my god! But I mean, I moved them all that day. Oh, did you sell them to Burbank? 
Yeah. Ah. I flipped them all. I flipped all of them that day. Bought my LeBron Tops Chrome Refractor 9.5. There you go. Yeah, I bought that for 10, and then I just moved that a couple weeks ago for 15. So what I've noticed, especially with football, is football is going crazy right now. I heard. His, his, his attempts are going for like 12, and they've consistently risen. I think they've hit 3K now for a PSA 10 Prism base, which is a silver because of the manufacturing. Wow. His stuff is going crazy. Deshaun Watson, anything but bad news for him. He lost his best receiver. He was at 250-ish. Now they're, they've hit 500 for the PSA 10 base. So I know a lot of hype around Drew Locke, Kyler. Are you guys getting in on it? And I know Bowman Chrome, the prospect. He's Robert, Wanda Franco. These guys have either sustained or they gone down. I haven't seen anything go up. I think that's going to be the next thing to go up because football's blowing up, basketball's blowing up. Baseball, there is that community, and it is a huge thing. Mike Trout's going crazy. These prospects are the next thing, next thing to go crazy in my eyes. So what are you guys doing on that sense of QBs and football? And are you guys going to get into Chrome? Are you guys going to stay away? Pretty much that's the question. What do you think, Sasha? Are you going in? All right, so uh... – I have not touched any football or baseball at all. I like with the football thing, like I just feel like it's so risky on my end where I'd rather just do basketball. Like I last year I saw though, like from week to week, you saw prices go up like a crazy amount and then other guys go up or go down like a crazy amount. So there's like a lot of fluctuation, which is like a little bit scary on my end and for yeah. my case. Um, I would say that if you know football, which I don't know football, like, that much like but if there's people that know football pretty well and I think they would do pretty well um you know buying and selling football cards it's just for me like I'm not as knowledgeable and I, I like to stay at places where I am knowledgeable on the baseball side it's interesting because I played baseball all my life like and but I've literally not touched a baseball card because like it's just I don't know just I, I haven't got there yet for me personally I just like I think basketball is more fun on my end and then soccer is like this growing sport where I, I see like a lot of opportunity. And so those are like kind of the places I stay. Um, so football, maybe I'll get into baseball, but I don't think I would really get into football. Maybe I'll buy like a card or two, but nothing, nothing crazy or serious. For sure. That's interesting that you played baseball, that, but, but you never bought baseball. And, and I knew that you, you haven't bought baseball or football, but that's, that's really interesting. So um, honestly, man, I, I've bought a little bit of baseball, a little bit of football, but I am just like you, Sasha. I am only basketball. I love it. It's my lane. I don't mind just sticking in it. Um, but you know, now that like I, you know, I, I do this more for a living and stuff. I was like, okay, well, I'll start like dabbling and everything. The only reason why the, the only baseball card I've really even bought is a Mike Trout uh, tops update. And the only reason why I even bought one was because um, a buddy of mine, when I went to the Houston show, was like, hey, if you see any Mike Trout PS say tens buy them for me i will give you the money i was like okay so i started going around to different booths trying to get their mike trout psa tens well what i realized was like it was as hard to get one of these as it was to get a lebron james tops chrome psa uh you know LeBron, lebron james tops chrome so i was like oh mike trout is the lebron for baseball got it okay cool so like i'll just play around in this arena with this one card from this one sport baseball and it's literally the only card i've owned like eight or nine different copies since february of this card um and then uh i will say though with the i will agree with you um shia the prices on this are so insane and everything else is not doing anything i would say that like an akuna or a soto tops update psa Franco, robert. Franco, robert they have to see something if these are doing 3k because at 3K, it's like, what would you rather have? Uh, you know, what would it be, 200? So 15 um, Acuna PSA 10s or one Trout? It's like all yeah. the margin. Like, you know, there's so much upside for the Acunas. So those have I, to go up. Yeah. I know my Franco, when I bought it, I bought it at 800. And at the time, it was doing 11, 12. <laughs> and then the Corona stuff hit, and it dropped. It went to like 9. And then went, now it's at like 8. And I'm not selling the PSA 10 and losing money on it because Robert's getting called up this year. It's already been announced. It's just he hasn't played. 
So his stuff is going to rebound back to at least a K. It's not going to go below eight. He's a top two prospect. Franco's the one, but Franco's not getting called up this year. So people who are investing in Franco got to wait. And then I know I had a discussion. I don't know if Sasha knows this, but I had the Deshaun Watson for some gold PSA 10. And I, and I had $40 into that, $40, because I won it in a mega rat. I got two spots and I won. Two spots of 100 to let you know, Sasha. Two out of 100. Two out of 100. And I, I honestly was screaming around the house whenever I hit it. And time, it was $1,100. It was because it, it was. I bought it for twenty dollars because it was it was a hundred spots at ten dollars each. I bought it at twenty dollars, and at the time it was a thousand dollar card, and I held it and then hype grew, hype grew, and ended up selling it. And I know I talked to a lot of people and they're saying it's not worth the risk. And one that comes to mind is Will, and Will always said, Shia, sell it. Why do you still have this? Deshaun Watson is not the safest QB, and if he takes one bad hit. His career could be over. The season could be over, and his thing will tank. I ended up selling it for thirty-eight hundred. Oh! So you you turned twenty bucks into thirty-eight hundred dollars. I sold it at the perfect time, and even if I could have redone it, I would have done I would have done the exact same thing. How, how long? Did, how, how, much, how long from twenty to thirty-eight hundred? A month? Two months? It was because I remember I got it. And then I think there was a like a trade night, and then it was trade fest, and then I sold it. So like three it months. Was probably three months I had it. I want to know. Insane. I want to know who you sold it to. Who you hustled? Pristine MJ Sports. And I tried. I tried getting a Luca Mojo because Mike Ooh. sold it to him, and I tried getting it, and he wouldn't sell it. He was keeping it. And I talked to Mike. I was like, Mike, how much did you sell it for? And I think he said like three K or something. Super cheap. It was something, and I was like, "How much would you sell?" It's like nine k. I'm like, "No, I'm not paying nine k now." But obviously, nine uh, k <laughs> is a discount right now. <laughs> so, um, I know a lot. Like we we can't go to trade nights and and places to buy and sell right now. But um, what are your kind of guys' strategies when you go into like conventions and trade nights and stuff like that? Are you are you looking for specific cards and you're only sticking to that? Um, are you just kind of like seeing what unfolds? Like, how do you kind of go about it? So I know for the Nationals, my first time, and I was with Mike pretty much the entire show. The entire show I was with Mike. Mike had his booth, and I was pretty much running with him. He was at his booth. I'd run, run the floor a little bit. We'd run it together. And I know personally, I was on the Deshaun Watson hunt during that time. I picked up a couple Deshaun Watson. And when it comes to trade nights, I go in there. I pretty much know what, what I want to sell. I know what I want to buy. But I also keep the open mind of, okay, if there's a deal here, I can see it going up. I'll snag it. I'll see what I can do. Yeah. So I always have those cards that I'm looking for. Like right now, Kobe, uh, Topps, Topps Chrome, LeBron, Topps Chrome, Luca, all those guys. There's always those. But then, like, for instance, the deal I did with the Trey, Red, White, and Blue, Shea, or the Kawhi Prism rookies I bought the other day. I wasn't necessarily looking for more Kawhi because I already have two PSA 10s. I wasn't looking for more. But at 260 a piece, I didn't see I could go wrong there. And for instance, the trades, they just popped up. Not cards I'm looking for, but if I have the cash and I think that there's a bigger upside than a downside, I'll take it. Makes sense. Um, I, I love this question. I really want to answer it. So I'm going to jump in real quick. Uh, so when I was coming up, when I was a kid, we didn't have the internet and stuff. We didn't have phones to check prices. Right. No, so no. I had, I had my head in my Beckett at all times, you know, checking prices, right. Cause those were the prices. Well, when I would go to my card shop, right. And then I went to a show once, but my card shop was basically my show. I got to go there. And, you know, I'd see stuff and see what the price was. I didn't want to be the kid that's like looking at what he's trying to get for it and then looking in a Beckett and stuff like that. So I would study the Beckett before I'd go to the card shop. And then whatever I saw was new. If it was something that I knew the value on and I saw the price, I'd try and like haggle and stuff like that. What I'm getting at is this is one of my secrets, man. I don't, I don't really tell people before a trade night or something or before a show, 
I'll stay up all night studying sold listings. And then I'll look through all my inventory that I'm bringing and I will get so up to date with all the latest sales on those cards that when I go to the trade night or the show, I, the, the trick is not having to look at your phone. Yeah. If you can try and navigate a deal without having to look at your phone, even if the other person's looking at their phone, but if you can be able to make decisions quickly enough and make offers fast enough, knowing what they'll probably accept, if you just say, hey, would you take this? Would you take this? Would you take this? Because you know the prices so well. Yeah. Bro, like, and then you take that to a show, you go to a national and something like that. I think, look, man, I, I set up booths and stuff. I know it is hard to keep track of inventory and fluctuations in prices. These guys don't have all the time in the world, so they put prices on cards that are too low. Sasha, you've done it at your own card shop, man. So it's like when you go to national, the best thing you can do or go to a show, the best thing you can do is walk the floor and look for things that you know and ask them how much it is, look at the price tag, whatever, and try and find those situations where you don't even have to pull out your phone. You can literally just look at it and say, I know if I pay this, I'm getting a smoking deal. And when you take that to trade night, man, it's like, you know, you're playing with handguns and everyone else is playing with knives, you know? Yeah. I, that's a great point. Studying price points before you go into a show. I, I, I do that too. Um, and it helped out a lot actually for me as well. I think yeah. they're fucking amazing, dude. It's like the best like thing like ever. Like you have a bunch of people who are all like in there, like in a, well, at bullpens, it's like, what like it's not that big of a room it's not bad that last trade night was crammed crazy too bro crazy too so much crammed. money oh my dude oh my god i know you guys are thinking about that but the, the, the situation that happened the last trade night we could we we could we got priced out you know um but um yeah dude i think trade nights are amazing but i think what well, like with just the amount of people we saw last trade night, that's a great sign for the hobby and where it's going currently. Are there any tips like, cause there's like some guys where like, I feel like when they come and buy a card, you're like, Oh, like I know, like I'll be able to get my asking price for it. Like they won't haggle. Like when you go into a deal or if you're, if you're looking to buy a specific card, are there any tips you could give, you know, the people watching um, of like haggle tips and how to get a price point that you're looking for? Um, Personally, when I go into a trade night, I pretty much already know the guys I want to deal with. There's always a couple guys at trade night that they come up to me and they say, can we make a deal? And I already know it's going to be a waste of time. There's A deal is not going to come out of it. And I just hate it because you don't want to be rude. And then you don't want to be like, whatever. So you try and push that away. So especially with trade nights, time is very limited. Trade nights happen for us at least once or twice a month, depending if they pan out or not. And yeah. the national, for instance, happens once a year. So you want to maximize your time there. Yeah. So if you don't think a deal is going to get done, get out of that situation right away. I agree. Um, whenever it comes to negotiations, always go low first. Um, I would say always go low. I have cu- made a couple mistakes going low, though, especially when a deal is already so good. Then you go low, and then they say, no, I'm not going to do what I originally said. Yeah. Then you wish, okay, I wish I just took what it was original. Facts. But I would say, know what the card is worth. Let's say it's worth 300 and the guy says 240 Don't go and say, I'll do 180 Because then he'll probably <laughs> check his phone, look at comp. Oh, it's 300 I'll do uh, 290 for you. Okay, no. You should have just taken the 240. So I would say go in, go in, know the comp, and start low if the price is right on comp. And just go from there. Know what you want. Don't buy stuff just to buy. I learned this with Sasha last time. Horrible mistake. Don't sell if you don't need to. Don't sell if you don't want to. And I ended up selling. Huge mistake. So I would say buy what you what want. Cards, don't buy to buy. What cards did you sell for context? I sold Luca. Uh, two was it two or three Luca PSA tens? And a green. Four. And a green. How many was it? There was a green and a green PSA ten, and there was anywhere from one to three PSA ten. Base. It was two or three, something like that. I yeah. think it was two or three. When and they were I, doing three hundred. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think they're doing a little less, maybe. 
And I remember I made a calculation error too. So that just was horrible. Yeah. I made money on it. I made money on okay. it though. Because you graded all of it. You made a ton of it. I graded all of it. And yeah. I bought them when they were what? 20, 30 bucks a yeah. piece. I bought the Luca Green for 60. So I made a killing on it. But if I held it like I was supposed to, because I told Sasha, I'll sell you the green. I don't want to sell the base. I ended up selling the base. So now I know, because I knew, I knew that those cards were going to be good. Yeah. But I just was caught up in the moment. And uh, there are certain points where you just got to slow down. Trade nights are very, very happening. Yeah. Especially that bullpen trade night. So that was popping. That was crazy, dude. And that was, that was insane. One thing I want to mention though is because I get like a lot of people, like I'm, I always tell people like, yo, like it's, you should never, you should never be looked down upon or looked down upon yourself for taking your profit, especially like if yes. you're buying your a card, like you, you, you upgrade it, you get a PSA 10, you sell it. Like it should never be looked down yeah. upon to, to take your profit and move on to the next deal. Um, because it, it seems like, like if you, you know, if you're making 50 bucks on a deal, and maybe you wait a month and you can make a hundred bucks. Well, what could you do with that 50 months in that month period? You could do a lot with that money. You can make it 300, exactly. 500 bucks instead of holding. Um, Absolutely. So I bring up that point. Cause I feel like a lot of people, you know, are, are so like, don't want to sell, but it's like, dude, you can make so many more deals by just exactly. moving your money, getting money in, moving money out. Absolutely. So, exactly. I think, I think one big thing about, I think I could say for all of us, we all have probably made mistakes yeah. um, that could have either made us more money or we should have done a deal or we shouldn't have done a deal. Yeah. I, I personally have done all three. Yeah. And, but at the end of the day, I've made a lot better choices, a lot more correct choices than I have made wrong. Off the top of my head, I can think of three or four, maybe five times I've made a deal that I shouldn't have, sold the card too early or whatever it may be. But I can't even count the amount of times where I did something right. Yeah. So at the end of the day, don't look at the things that you did wrong. Just learn from them and then just move on. Yeah, you can't look back. Awesome. Dude. You cannot look back. It, especially like in this game, dude, if you look, you'd... <laughs> You'll never so sell again. You'll never sell again if you look exactly. I could have had a LeBron Topps Chrome Refractor for my Luca Blue and $1,000. Oh. I didn't do it. It was the blue out of 199 right? Blew out of 199 in a thousand. And I remember I talked to Mike about this deal for, I think it was a week because I was going back and forth. Should I take it? Should I not? And this was around the time of the orange PSA 10 sale for 15,000, 15,000. And this was when the, the refractor was doing how much? I think it was around three or four. Yeah. It was like, it was 3,500, 4k. It was like, whatever. Yeah. And, and exactly. Luca, Luca, Luca was the hottest exactly. thing. Ever. No one was talking about LeBron. No one. It was Luca, Luca, and a little bit more Luca. Do you yeah. guys remember uh, Trade Fest? Remember Trade Fest, right? The, what, in October. In October. Trade Fest two. Yeah. When Trey went off like that night, and you saw in the room, everybody shifted to I'm buying Trey. I'm buying like the like the price of Trey went up in that hour he was playing in the room. I bought. I remember oh, I bought like ten or fifteen trays off of you, dude. Yeah. The, yeah. But this was before the big game. This was remember the I bought, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was before. It was before. Yeah. And I remember you were there with your boxes from PSA. You had all your the nines, the tens, the base. I was buying trays so much, and then I was talking with Chris, also Jordan, and Will, yeah. and we're all talking about trays. I remember I didn't make a whole lot of deals that that day. I think it was the second day. Yeah. And I remember within the last 10 minutes, I went out to Fielder for MVP. I don't know what his name is. He's always at all, all the trade nights. Blonde-haired guy, kind of bigger guy. And I went up to him, like, give me your Luca Silver PSA 10. I bought it for, like, 600 bucks. And that was the last deal I did there. So I remember that that craze, and even the comps, they were rising by the minute. I remember when he had that huge game, they were rising. And yeah. people <laughs> stopped selling and started hoarding. So I remember that. People came up to me saying, hey, you selling any of those trays that you bought earlier? I remember in my box, I had like 30 of them. Yeah. 30. Wow. Yeah. That, was, that was an insane trade night. But Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I remember I bought a, a Mbappe Immaculate out of 65 for $10 at that trade fest. <laughs> What's it worth now? I don't, I, don't, I don't even know, dude. Take a guess. 
I'd probably say like 600. Jeez. I'd say. Um, but, but your best, best Mbappe card is the Kaboom, right? You said that is just. That's got to be, right? Yeah, it's a Kaboom BGS 10, bro. Those are so hard to grade. Tough to grade. Kabooms are tough to grade in general. It's a BGS 10. I bought it for like 500 bucks. It was actually, it was like late February, early March. Like his prices had, were, were like decent then. But I was like, dude, this, like I had my bid up to like 800. Like, and I got it for like 500 bucks. And then like we saw this explosion. So I, that's a crazy card too. Um, and it's honestly, a, it's a dope and like really like appealing looking card. Hell yeah. All right, boys. I think that's going to be it. I think we went like almost two hours, guys. Like, whoa. Like a solid two hours, which is amazing. But one thing I want to go over before we get off is what's one card that's kind of on your bucket list, your wish list, um, that maybe when we get on a next episode in a couple months or whenever that is, maybe you will have acquired. Um, is it LeBron? Is it Jordan? What is it? What is the card you're kind of looking for right now that you want? Um, that's on your bucket list. Go for it, Shia. I go ahead. Uh, I want to pick go. up a Kobe Topps Chrome rookie. Um, have not decided which grade because I know they're all pretty expensive as they are. Um, either Kobe. Um, I'm pretty much Kawhi'd out. I have a lot of Kawhi. Uh, maybe yeah. another LeBron Topps Chrome. Maybe a PSA nine, BGS nine. But those are probably the main two I'd be looking for. Amazing. Uh, for me, um, it's a little bit vanilla because we've been talking about it. I want to get a LeBron Topps Chrome PSA 10 because I sold mine. Uh, I sold mine like while the pandemic was going on because I was into it for literally nothing. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I did well on it. But I'd like to get that. What's, what's funny is that exact copy is for sale on auction right now with two days left and 22 hours. So I'm, I'm very – I'm looking like I'm probably just – and I know who has it. So I can win it and then – go no fees and uh, do PayPal FF and they already agreed they'd do that. So I might, I might do that. But um, honestly, uh, I really want a LeBron auto. I really want a LeBron auto. Um, and there's a bunch uh, for sale on PWCC right now um, going in auction. And I think this is a great time to buy them because with this parabolic rise we're seeing with everything else, I think um, that LeBron autos, you know, could be next because, you know, the really nice LeBron autos just don't exist because, he doesn't sign so um yeah that's it cool yeah and i think for me it's going to be a lebron refractor Woo! i was considering um turning a couple of the mbappes into the refractor that might be a possibility because i'm in mbappes for nothing um but we'll see what happens hold up what type of refractor what grade um well you have the eight five right i have an eight five but is that the, is that the type of grade you want to get I want a 10, but, like, I'm looking at anything, really. Got you. Got you. We'll probably link up uh, after this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Definitely. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, guys, I appreciate everybody watching episode number 62. I appreciate our guests. Where can, uh, our, where can our audience find you on Instagram? What's your handles? Mike, you good. Uh, I am Coleman underscore cards on Instagram. And thank you so much for having me, Sasha. Really appreciate it, man. This was awesome. No worries, dude. What about you, Shia? I'm Steeler Cards on Instagram, and this was a great opportunity. Can't wait to do it again. And uh, had a lot of fun talking with you guys. All righty, guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure everybody go like and subscribe to the channel. It'll mean a ton. Woohoo! Thank you.